Tyler from Aspire Sports. I'm going to be giving you my early, very early week 11 start and sits. So a lot of things could change, COVID, injury news, weather. So some of these players, I might release this video and an hour later, one of these players is you know, out for the game. I have no idea. So check back on Thursday night. We'll be doing a live stream. Check out the live stream. I'll have it updated for you and everything. So very early week 11 start and sits. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the first start here, and these are going to be some that aren't so obvious. I'm not going to do obvious, you know, oh, you're starting Dalvin Cook. No duh, you're starting Dalvin Cook, right? These are going to be some that are, are not obvious, hopefully aren't that obvious. So first one is going to be Cam Newton. I honestly think that Cam Newton this week is a top five play at the quarterback position. Gets Houston, who Houston right now is giving up the ninth most fantasy points at the position. So if you have somebody like Deshaun Watson, who has a really tough matchup, I mean, against New England here. So I honestly would consider benching Watson for Cam Newton this week. That's how good I think Cam Newton can be this week. I honestly think he's a top five play. So let's go into the next one. And the next one is also going to be a quarterback, and that's going to be Justin Herbert. So if you're sitting there and you're not sure who to play, Justin Herbert, or say like Aaron Rodgers, Justin Herbert, there's only four quarterbacks that I would play over Justin Herbert. Mahomes, Wilson, Kyler, actually three, That because that's it. I'd only play those quarterbacks over Justin Herbert this week. He gets the Jets, who we know the Jets are bad. So Justin Herbert is an absolute smash play this week. Fire him, if, fire him up if you have him, because he's a great play. And the next one here is going to be Teddy Bridgewater. I think Teddy Bridgewater, obviously it depends on his health if he's playing in this game, but I think Teddy Bridgewater is a really good play this week. Detroit just gave up nearly 400 yards to Alex Smith. So at home with better weapons than what Alex Smith has to work with, I, I think he's a smash play as well. He's honestly a top 10 play for me this week. And then let's go to the next one, and that's going to be James Conner. James Conner, I think, has led a lot of fantasy managers down, believe me, I know. And as a Steelers fan, I kind of said this in my previous video, honest, I honestly think that the Steelers were just toying with the Bengals last week. They just really wanted to try to connect on some deep passes because they haven't been. But as the season progresses, they definitely need to get the, they need to get the run game going. 100% if they want to make a deep playoff push, they need to get the game, run game going. So I think they start trying, especially this week, against a bad Jacksonville team. So 100% fire him up. I think he's a top 10 play this week. Let's go to the next one, and that's going to be Damian Harris. If he's on the waivers, if this video comes out before then, or if he's sitting there somehow in free agency, 100% go and pick him up. He looks good. The only thing he needs to do is score a touchdown. And if he scored a touchdown last week, he had a phenomenal week at the running back position. This week gets Houston, who honestly is probably the worst run defense in the NFL. So I would 100% fire him up. I think he's an RB2 this week. And if he scores, he has RB1 potential. If he can get in the end zone, if Cam doesn't, you know, vulture some of his touchdowns. So Damian Harris, very solid play. And if he's a, if he's available as a free agent, 100% go and pick him up. And the next one's going to be DeAndre Swift. Finally, they gave DeAndre Swift a real workload. Had 21 carries, 149 yards, total yards. He looked really good doing it as well. This week, it's Carolina who just gave up 200 yards on the ground. So 100%, I think he's a easy RB2 with... RB1 potential, and especially in PPR leagues. If it's a full point PPR, yes, I honestly think he has RB1 potential. Let's go into the next one, and that's going to be Kalen Balazs. I think Kalen Balazs is a good RB2 this week. There's only three running backs, three running backs in the past two weeks since he's became basically their full-time back that has had more touches than him. That's Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, and James Robinson. Those are the only three running backs in the entire league that have more touches than him. So yes, 100%, he is an RB2 as long as Austin Eckler is out. This is a, another good matchup. Honestly, start all of your Chargers players because this is just going to be a good week. But he's a RB2. If you're sitting there and you don't know who to start, like he's a really good start this week. Go pick him up. He's only rostered in 21% of leagues as well. If he's available, go pick him up. Next person is going to be Michael Thomas. And the only reason I say this is because maybe you're saying, well, duh, he's a, he's a really good play. But I see a lot of people on Twitter honestly thinking about dropping him. Do not drop him. Do not drop him. They came out and said that Drew Brees was hurt. Now that Drew Brees isn't the quarterback, I honestly think that helps him. Jameis Winston, I think, will be able to get him the ball. And I think it's a really good matchup as well against Atlanta. Probably one of the worst secondaries right there with Seattle. Michael Thomas is going to be a wide receiver one this week. And let's go into the next one here. Three, two, one. And let's go into the next one. And that's going to be Robbie Anderson. 
Yes, I know a lot of people are also worried about Robbie Anderson, but I do think that he rebounds this week against Detroit, who I don't think they're that good in the secondary, honestly. Like, they're in the middle of the pack. But I don't think that Carolina is going to be able to run the ball effectively, so I think they're going to have to pass the ball. And I think – I just don't think that Detroit's defense is that good. So I think he bounces back in a good way and is a wide receiver too in this game. Next one is DJ Chark. I'm a Steelers fan, and I can say that their secondary hasn't been that great this year. It's kind of their Achilles heels right – three, two, one. The next one is going to be DJ Chark. I'm a Steelers fan. The secondary for Pittsburgh hasn't been that great this year. It's kind of like their Achilles heel right now. And I think DJ Chark will have a decent week this week. I think he's a wide receiver too. So if you're kind of contemplating, he honestly should have had an even better week last week. Was wide open for a touchdown pass. But seriously, the ball just died in the air. The winds were like 30 mile an hour um, in Green Bay. So it just died in the air. But he probably would have scored, which would have just made his fantasy day even better. I think it was like a 50-yard touchdown pass. So... It would have been a very good day, and I think he has a pretty good day in this game. He's a solid wide receiver, too, this week. Let's go into the next one. That's going to be Jacoby Myers. Hopefully, you got Jacoby Myers also off of waivers because he is going to be, I think, very valuable going forward. Let's just say start all of your players against Houston because the defense is not very good. He's seeing a 40% target share right now the past two weeks. 40%. Gets Houston, who right now they they're not very good defensively anywhere against even quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. So fire him up. I think he's a solid wide receiver too this week. And especially in PPR, I think he might even be like fringe back end wide receiver one, especially if he scores a touchdown. So I think he sees a, a lot of volume in this game, a lot of targets, a lot of catches, because I don't think they can guard him. Next one is going to be Mark Andrews. And I think Mark, Mark Andrews this week is a top three tight end. The past three weeks, he's played three teams that are fourth or top four against tight end position in fantasy football. So it's been a brutal stretch for him, and he didn't have that bad of a game last week. This week against Tennessee, which right now, as you can see, 14th most fantasy points to the tight end position this year. So I think he rebounds, and I think he has a pretty solid game. And tight end, honestly, is pretty ugly. So there's not a whole lot that are in better situations. So I think he rebounds pretty well. Go ahead and absolute start him this week. And the last one is going to be Austin Hooper. Now, I was big on Austin Hooper last week. I started getting off of him towards the end of last week because the weather is going to be miserable in Cleveland. Hopefully, the weather isn't terrible again. Right now, it doesn't look nearly as bad. It looks like 15 mile an hour winds, which isn't terrible. And I think that they can definitely pass in that. If it gets up to like 30 again, count me out. Count out all of the passing attack on both sides of this game and just go to the run games. But right now, it doesn't look terrible, so I do think he's honestly a top 10 play at the tight end position this week. So as long as the weather holds, hopefully. Go ahead and fire him up. And let's get into the sits here. Now, some of these sits you might disagree with. Leave in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions, who to start, who to sit. We'll gladly answer any questions you have. So let's go into the sits. And the first one's going to be Deshaun Watson. I do think Deshaun Watson is a sit this week, and honestly, he has a really brutal schedule coming up against some really good pass defenses. Right now, New England, as you can see, is the sixth best against fantasy quarterbacks this season. I think it's going to be a rough day for him. If you have somebody better, even like Cam Newton, I would start Cam Newton this week over him. Next one, let's go to Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, I know it's tough to sit him, but right now, gets Indianapolis, who's giving up the least amount of fantasy points to the quarterback position this year. Indianapolis defense just looks really good. If you have better options, I would start them, or I would start that better option. One person that I would say over these two, I would honestly consider, and that's Jameis Winston. I honestly, and that might be a really hot take this right now, but I do think Jameis Winston honestly has really good value going forward. And if you can get him and if you need quarterback help, I definitely would try to go and get him because he's going to be somebody who honestly I think plays for next three or four weeks until Drew Brees comes back. So I would go out and try to get him. Has Atlanta twice in the next three games. Atlanta twice. Beautiful matchups. So go out and try to get him. And I honestly think he's going to be a top 10 quarterback this week at Jameis Winston. Aaron Rodgers might fall outside of the top 10 this week with a brutal matchup. Hot take? Uh, we'll see. Next one. Aaron Jones, as you can see, may be a trend here for Packers. This past week, it was weird. Beginning of the game, he really, really wasn't getting any touches. And then towards the end, he started getting more touches. And his 
Fantasy Day was salvaged due to his receiving upside. But this is another terrible matchup against Indianapolis, giving up the third least uh, fantasy points to, to, to the running back position this year. They did let Derrick Henry go over 100 yards, but that's also Derrick Henry. And I just expect... I expect the Packers to really struggle in this one, and he's going to have to have a touchdown. I think he's like a back-end RB1, a high upside RB2, just because you know he can score in the red zone if they get close, can run it in a couple times. So, But I, I do think if you have better options, I would consider starting them. But if you don't have any, yes, you got to roll the dice, and just hopefully he has a good game. Next one is going to be Kenyon Drake. I think he's honestly like a touchdown dependent RB3 this week. I don't like Drake at all. Get Seattle. Seattle, as you can see, gives up the 12th most, but that's also because they're giving up a crazy amount of rushing touchdowns. But they're rushing yards. They're right now, I believe they're third least in the NFL or fifth least, somewhere around there. They're bottom five in the least amount of rushing yards allowed to the running back position. They got Snack Harrison this last week. He probably plays more snaps this week. Really good run defender. I just don't expect him to have a good game this week. I, I think it's going to be inefficient, and you're going to, he's going to have to get a touchdown to bring value back to you. So if you have better options, I would 100% go with the other options. Next one is going to be Todd Gurley. And with Kenyon Drake, I'd honestly start like Kalen Balaj over him. Todd Gurley, this is another touchdown dependent. I'll say RB2, but honestly, RB3 range as well. Whereas he, if he doesn't score a touchdown, the yards are going to be ugly. He's probably going to have like 50 yards in this game against New Orleans, who has the best run defense in the NFL. So I don't expect many yards from him at all, and you're going to have to hope he falls in the end zone. I honestly would consider starting Kalen Balazs over him as well, if you have him. This is a brutal matchup. A brutal matchup. Scores touchdown or bust. If he doesn't, he's going to be a he's going to be a dud this week. And the next one here is going to be Cooper Cup. I don't think it's going to be a good game this week. Last week was a little concerning, honestly, for all these Rams wide receivers, especially Cooper Cup. The reason why I say that is because last week he played, I got to double check how many snaps real quick. He played 37 out of 70 snaps last week. They ran a lot of uh, 12 personnel, and in the 12 personnel, they had Josh Reynolds in over him. So that's, to me, that's very concerning. Josh Reynolds played the most snaps last week. So that's very concerning going forward for both of these wide receivers. And somebody you definitely should go pick up is Josh Reynolds. But I think Cooper Cup this week gets Tampa Bay. I expect them to probably do the same with 12 personnel. And I just don't think he plays that many snaps, which leads to not a very good fantasy day. I think he's a low-end wide receiver too. A little bit higher in PPR, full-point PPR leagues but I think he's a low end wide receiver too this week. And the next one here is going to be Mike Evans and Antonio Brown. I think both of them are going to be duds this week. Right now they play against the Rams who are giving up the least fantasy points to the wide receivers this year. They have, It's a good matchup in the slot for Chris Godwin, but for both of these guys as their outside receivers, this is going to be a tough game. They have... Jalen Ramsey on the outside and also Darius Williams on the outside, who are both very good in coverage. So I don't expect them to have a good week this week. I would look elsewhere if you're able to. I think that they're honestly like low-end wide receiver twos this week, especially Mike Evans. He's like a touchdown dependent wide receiver two, wide receiver three this week. Next one is going to be Jerry Judy. What a letdown. What a letdown. I was so big on him last week, but Drew Locke sucked. I honestly think Drew Locke is terrible. He has not looked good. Since he's come into this league, he yes, it's been a young career for him, but he hasn't looked good. Hasn't lived up to the hype that he had, and quite frankly, last week was terrible. Yes, he didn't have that bad of a week this last this previous week, but now gets Miami, who honestly, I think Miami's the best secondary in the league right now. Well, I'd say one of the best, probably top three. And honestly, might go to the Rams. They might have the best, but honestly, the Miami Dolphins are very good secondary-wise. He's going to have a tough matchup on the outside. Now, if he was on the slot, maybe they move him into the slot, but they, he's been playing outside. If they move him into the slot, he has a really good matchup against Needman. But the outside cornerbacks, Howard and Byron Jones, are both really good in coverage. I don't expect a very good game from him. I think he's like a wide receiver three this week. And let's go into the last one. That's going to be Robert Tunyon. Now, maybe you have to play him. Because the tight end position is just brutal. It's ugly, right? I don't advise anybody to send anybody because there's probably nobody else that's better, honestly. But if you have like a Logan Thomas or an Austin Hooper still out there, I would 100% go and get those guys and play them over him. Right now, plays 
the Colts, who the Colts are giving up the least fantasy points to the tight end position. Hey, the trend, sit the, sit the Packers this week, unfortunately. Um, I wouldn't say Devontae Adams, but I would temper your expectations for Deontay Adams this week. But Robert Tunyon, definitely, it's just a brutal matchup. I don't expect much out of him. I expect a dud performance, who's basically going to have to catch a touchdown to have any chance at a decent fantasy day. So 100% sit him if you can. If not, because there's not better options out there, then obviously roll the dice. Hopefully it scores for you. With that being said, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, ask it in the comments below. We'll answer any questions you have. Make sure you follow us on our social medias that is also listed in the description below. Thank you and have a wonderful day.